everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Item Box. This one's based on that classic February holiday of Groundhog Day. So we're counting down the cutest moles and other such rodents in video games. Yo, Item Box, what's going on? Well, of course I'm talking about Groundhog Day in the intro skit. Yeah, but you said the holiday in February. What else would you want me to talk about? So I guess in the spirit of Valentine's Day, since we already missed the day itself, we're gonna do a video on the best co-op game so that you and your sweetheart have something to play together in this month of love. Because I guess everyone just has a sweetheart to play video games with. But in all seriousness, these games will be fun for you to play with anyone. Your friends, your family, your co-workers, strangers from off the street, I mean anyone. Now if someone wouldn't mind going first, I have to rewrite my segment so that it isn't about groundhogs. Nowadays co-op games have a tendency to be way too easy. Oh, you can respawn instantly. Oh, you get free power-ups. Oh, the enemies are useless. But back in the day, they were serious. Games would put hair on your chest and war in your eyes, and no game was better about that than Gunstar Heroes. The game's awesome single player, but add a second player and the intensity just ramps up. The game's unique weapon system and number of enemies means bullets are constantly flying in every direction on screen, and adding a friend means you can toss each other around into enemies, turning your buddy into a weapon and adding another layer of strategy to the game. Is it a good game for playing with your mom who doesn't know what a game is? Heck no. Is it a good game for manly men who love playing manly games with each other and doing man things? Yes! If only I had someone else to play with. Harry! What's my favorite co-op game? <laughs> That's easy. It's Journey. What? Oh, no, I get it. No, it's not a real co-op game. Hey, 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 shh. Come here a second. See that? That's co-op. Journey handles its co-op multiplayer in an interesting and, frankly, awesome way. The game's designer, Genova Chen, put it like this. It's about two strangers who meet online. They don't know who they are or how old they are. All they know is that is another human being. And that's the thing. We're just two nameless, faceless human beings sharing this experience together. We don't know each other. We've never spoken and odds are we probably never will. However, with the simple press of a button, either one of us can let out this little chirp. This chirp has no intonation. It doesn't sound angry or sad or even happy. And yet, we both know exactly what the other one means when we use it. It's a beautifully designed game all around, but this co-op aspect might just be my favorite thing about it. It's simple in the best way possible, and it keeps people from acting like a dick. Well, unless you do this. Battleblock Theater is a game that literally requires you and your co-op partner to cooperate. Who'd have thunk it? It's it's so cleverly designed in such a way that just screwing around and doing your own thing is gonna get the both of you absolutely nowhere. And yet the gameplay feels like you're just screwing around doing your own thing. In the right circumstances, nothing is going to go right. Except for the laughter and the good times and the fact that the two of you somehow miraculously make it to the end of the level. It's not a test of two people's friendship, it's uh, it's more like a big sloppy kiss of a compliment to it, I guess, to put it one way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, ain't nobody know nothing about the definition of the word co-op uh, until you play Battle Block Theater.
When I think back to playing games cooperatively, some of my fondest memories come from Animal Crossing on the GameCube. And while you can't actually play it co-op in the traditional sense, you could play it like my sibling Morty and I did. We would go through our daily activities together, one after another, and just try to keep our tiny little town of Kaznir, which was Morty's excellent name choice, running smoothly. We would play every day, like you do with Animal Crossing, and we built an awesome town. We had giant houses and tons of cool stuff, and even though we cheated a little, I mean, come on, we were young, we didn't know, it, it still was so much fun just playing a game together. Building that town together brought us lots of fun and good times, and even probably brought us closer together as siblings. Of course, as the sequels came out, we started building our own separate towns and only visiting each other's occasionally. But you know what? That was a great co-op experience too. So I'd say if you're looking for a game to play with someone else, you can't go wrong with New Leaf for the 3DS. It's definitely the best Animal Crossing game that's been made to date. And if you build a town together, you'll have a great time. Or even if you build them separately, which most people will probably do, It'll be so much fun, and you'll just relate about Animal Crossing stuff, and it'll be great. That's the co-op game I recommend. A game that isn't really a co-op game. There you go. You know, I think that went pretty well, but nothing will beat that script I had on Monty Mole. Like, seriously. That was amazing. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is a game that I have fallen in love with over the past half year, and I believe it is the definitive co-op game. Competitive mode sees you working in a team of five to complete an objective, or kill every member of the other team. As a terrorist, your objective is to plant a bomb on one of the map's two sites, while being a counter-terrorist means that you have to defend these sites or defuse a planted bomb. Communication in a team is a key to success, organising strategies, wait, fine, play from, uh, play from connector, relaying information on enemy positions, TT, I think, and jungle, sorry. Telling that dickhead and your team to pull his head together, or he'll kill us all. Drop my cum out of your mum's mouth. As much as teamwork is a key, your aim has to be on point, as well as recoil control and movement. So basically, not only is CSGO the best team game of all time, it's also the best individual game of all time. Now, if only it had skateboards and a rockin' soundtrack. I had a friend to play co-op games with! Hi! You ready to rock? Whoa! Guitar Hero. You remember that series? You know, the games where you use the guitar controller to play rhythm games and get all funky and junky with friends? Well, we never forgot! I still remember us sitting around the campfire talking about how we can't finally wait to beat Freebird. Those were the days. The co-op in Guitar Hero 2 was electric! Literally! You see there, Ruby, there's a music meter between each player's fretboard. There lies our reign of how kick-ass we're playing. Green, you're good to go, and red, you dead. Guitar Hero 2 made it so that we both add to the music meter, so if one of us is sucking a big one, it brings us both down. But here is the beauty of co-op. There's a thing called STORE POWER! If activated, it slams our rating sky high! It can even save us from getting booed off the stage! The reason why we chose this game over the myriad of other Guitar Hero titles is the simplicity of the co-op. In later titles, the star power, how people fail, pretty much everything is individualized. Doesn't really feel like you're playing on stage together if we're both playing lead guitar, you know what I mean? Plus, this game has my favorite song! Dragdoor! You'll never guess what Perry's favorite song is. It's dead! <laughs> 